For my new short film that I'm working on currently, I'm having to make a lot of nature scenes really quickly. So I wanted to share my tips and demonstrate how to make a fast nature scene in Blender. First, a quick advice. My biggest advice is to use high quality assets. This might seem obvious, but when I was starting out, I thought I should model everything on my own, make my own grass, my shrubs, my own foliage. You can definitely do this, but it will take a lot more time. I scanned and modeled my own assets and I use them to this day. However, like I said, that takes time. And currently, I'm battling against a few deadlines at the same time. So efficiency matters more than custom made models at this time. But let's begin. Start with a plane. Scale it to taste. Tab into edit mode, subdivide it a little, add a displace modifier, new, click this here and then open up the drop down, choose clouds, play around with these settings, shade smooth. Also the scale of the plane matters when using displacement. If I make this small, Ctrl A, apply scale and then scale it up, it's gonna look like this. But if I apply the scale when it's scaled up like this, the displacement gives us a different result. Turn on proportional editing, then pull on a few places. To change the area you affect, use your mouse scroll wheel. Slap a texture on it from Polyhaven or Ambient CG. These are CC0 textures, completely free, links are below. I have some of them in my asset browser, so I can quickly throw them into my scenes. Let's draw this dirt ground. Now your texture is probably too big. You can go into shader editor and then here you can increase the number. But you will notice it gets repetitive. Blender Guru has a has pretty useful notes for this. He explains it in this video. And you can get this note from the description of that video. We'll put this here. We can delete this mapping node, increase the scale here, and then using these settings here we can break up that repetition. Let's add some high quality nature assets. My favorite nature assets comes from Botanic. They have a large and growing selection of trees, flowers, all kinds of foliage. I'll throw some of these trees there. Also keep in mind that trees raise the grounds they grow on. So with proportional editing enabled, pull those places up where you place the trees. There's probably a way to do this automated with geometry nodes, but I don't know it yet. So let's look through our camera, place it. If you press shift tilde, you can control your camera with WASD keys, Q and E for up and down. Then I discovered this add-on recently, Geoscatter. It is paid, it comes with a bunch of assets in it, and you can purchase a lot of extra nature packs for this add-on, but there are free alternatives too, like I mentioned. I think there's G-Scatter, which is a free alternative by Gresswold. I haven't used that yet, but the Kaizen tutorials just made a great video about it. Alright, back to our tutorial. Be careful here, if your plane is too big with an applied scale, Geoscatter will try to fill the plane and probably kill your computer. You can use some optimization tricks for that. For example, if you cheat your camera angle, you can get away with a lot less geometry, when in reality your scene looks like this. Select a biome, scatter the geometry, add some wind, it's really easy with this add-on. I have to add that this add-on is massive, packed with a lot of tools in it. Brandon's Drawings has a great video about it, diving into more of its features. I recommend that video if you're interested. Let's vertex paint what we can see. Now if we enable both of these, pressing Alt, Vertex Group, choose that group we just made, turn on these layers and they should only be Oh, okay, we have to flip this. They only appear where we painted them. Much more optimized. Now, your sunlight is probably too weak. For my latest renders, I've been using it 25 to even 35 sometimes. So crank that sunlight up. Now, you need an HDRI. Fastest way to add an HDRI, go into World Properties, click on this yellow circle. While hovering your mouse over the options, press E for Environment Texture. Press Open and pick your HDRI. If you don't have one, download one from Polyhaven. They're free. And just like this, it's already looking very pretty. Let's add one more hill. Now this one doesn't have the material, so... 
click on this, shift click on that, control L, link materials. For the HDRI, I usually drop it down to 0.3. And if you wish to rotate this, go into shading and then world and then control T, have the node wrangler enabled and you can turn it like this. Then add the secret sauce, fog. I have my secret fog recipe here. Let me show you which I also talk about in this video, I encourage you to check out. It's a math set to multiply, going into volume scatter, and then light path node is camera ray going into the first one, and the second one is connected outside. And I have the controls here. Let's set it down to 0.1 first. Scale it up so your entire scene is in this fog. Now, let's shape our light. This is how I do it. Add a plane. Give it a new material. And into the alpha, plug in a noise. Add a color ramp in between. And crush these values a little. Now sunlight will pass through this and give us this cloud-like texture so our light is shaped and you can play with these values to taste if you make this fog thicker and look towards the sunlight you can get some beautiful god rays let's add some wind to our foliage And with the botanic add-on, we can add wind to the trees as well. Add depth of field, a little bit of movement. If you want a secondary camera, let's copy this. Go into the timeline while the camera is selected, Control B. Let's go into the second camera position, Control B again. Let's delete the keyframes for the second camera, change the camera angle a little. You could also add a character to make the scene even better. I've been using Character Creator 4 and I'll be talking about my character soon. So here's how I've been making my nature scenes. I hope you enjoyed this video and learned a thing or two from it. And I'll see you in the next one, I hope. For those who watch the whole thing and still are here, I have some closing thoughts and advice. I believe the point is no longer to make it a realistic scene, but to tell a story. We've all seen those ultra realistic renders of forests and gardens. I think I get the point, we can achieve realism. And what now? These are just tools for us to tell our stories, so, so don't get hung up on the details of creating your own grass or trees. I did it in the past and it was super fun. I collected some leaves from a vacation I went to, took a picture, slapped them onto a tree and this is one of my earliest renders. This process was incredibly fun but if you're not going for a similar experience, use the tools that makes this process quick and easy. Rather, focus on your story. Quickly make a nature scene, put a swing on a tree and an old man staring to that swing. Now we have a story. Your scene is no longer about how translucent your leaves are, but it's about a story. And I think as storytellers, we should focus on that more. You can make the scene yours, because it is your story. This is my approach at least. And if anybody makes that swing render, please tag me. I'd love to see it. Alright, this is the real end. I hope I'll see you in the next one.